Now I'm going to show you the proper way to test a capacitor. The first thing you want to check on a capacitor is the leakage. And then you can check the capacity. Because especially the, the, you don't know what circuit it's going into, but if it's going into a, um, a plate to grid coupling uh, circuit, that capacitor has to be able to withstand the rated voltage. In this case, this particular capacitor I've showed you is, has a rating of 400 volts. So we're going to go ahead and check, and we're going to put on 400 volts on that capacitor. And we will check for breakdown voltage. This piece of equipment here. I got so many leads hanging around here, it's making it very hard to see anything, but that's always the way it has been in this shop. It's a, it's a real royal mess. This is a pyramid. CRA-1. This is one of the best capacitor checkers I've ever used. It has a nice meter that registers both milliamps and voltage. You got the high scale, the low scale. You got the 0 to 60 volts, 0 to 600 volts, and then your current over here. You got your Wheatstone bridge. Of course, your power factor loss. So, the, on the electrolytics, your power factor should always be really down down here. Anything in the 10 or 20 percent is a loss. So, this is uh, registering power factor and loss. And of course, you got the, the ranges where the leakage and capacity and so forth. We're going to put it on leakage now, and uh, we're hooked up to the. Uh, the Wheatstone Bridge and Leakage Terminals here. Okay, right now we're on the uh, high side, 0 to 600 volts. This capacitor here is rated at 400 volts. We're sitting on 200. Here's my digital meter readout. I mean, it's 209.4. I mean, it's not perfect. I mean, this is a, a what, 50-year-old piece of equipment here. I did calibrate it, but that was about 10 years ago. For safety reasons, so I don't get zapped, we're going to flip this meter down. The switch right here, we went down. Here, his was 153 here, and now it's down to the lowest range, which is uh, 6.26 volts DC. For safety reasons, we're going to keep it there until I put the capacitor across, and then I'll flip it back up. I've got the capacitor across the output of this tester, and also the meters across it, too. Now I'm going to flip the switch back up to the high range, which is the 0 to 600, but we're only going to put 400 on it. And we're going to verify that 400 with my digital meter. which is right here. Okay, now I'm going to crank her up until she reads 400. Now the capacitors, if it's leaky, it's not going to get up to 400. It's a leaky pretty bad. But this is a new capacitor. Here we go. Here. You can't beat that. 399 volts. 398. 399. Okay. She's reading a little under 400 by my meter up here. It's terrible when you got bad eyesight and you can't see the equipment that I used to be able to see from the bench. I got to get right up on top of it. And that's why I kind of like not doing as much work up here as I used to because of that. Okay, we're not breaking down at all. We're holding we're holding at 398 volts this capacitor which I got to be very careful here because uh, the leads are hot is holding up. Okay, we're holding at 400 volts. 
Now I'm going to flip the current. This tells you how much leakage current there is. First on the 50 milliamp your scale. You can see it's not even moving the needle. Now on the 5 milliamp scale. Not even moving the needle. As a matter of fact, the voltage went up to 419 volts when I went into these scales here. So the meter is, uh, you know, the uh, tester is, uh, you know, not putting out precisely what it should be. Still putting out the 400 volts when we drop it back down to the voltage readings here, we're on the 400 volts. We're on the Wheatstone Bridge, but we're putting out 26 volts approximately. I don't have the meter hooked up now, but I just tested it. AC across the capacitor. There is no DC going across, but it puts 26 volts AC across the capacitor uh, to uh, check out the capacity on the Wheatstone Bridge. I want to point out something that I really screwed up on my lousy eyesight. This is a 1. 0.5 microfarad capacitor, not a 0.1. This is what happens when you get old and your eyesight deteriorate. I read this as a 0.1. I didn't look at this that closely. That's why it took so long to charge up on the ohmmeter. But anyways, that's a 1.5 microfarad 400 volt capacitor. We're gonna, that's why I was having a little problem setting it up on the Wheatstone Bridge here because I was way over here. I'm looking up here and I'm reading 1.5 microfarads. I says, what the heck is going on here? So, there she is. I don't know if you can see that very well here, but we're reading on the top scale. All right, she's reading 1.6. You can't beat that with a stick, can you? to rock the dial a little bit and keep an eye on the tuning indicator there. All right, there is we there is our capacity reading. All right, I can't complain about that. That's close to 1.5. There's your 1.4. There's your 1.5 in the middle. She's almost 1.6. Definitely not a problem with this. Okay. Now we just went over testing a capacitor. The proper way to test it putting a voltage onto it. 